let's say hi to John Baptiste, everybody. Was that Tico Tico no Fuba? Yeah, Tico Tico no Fuba. Yes, indeed. <laughs> I, I love listening to Brazilian music when I'm down. It, gets, it, it cuts right through it. I don't care how mm. down I am. Yeah, and you feel the sun on your skin. I love that vibe. Have you been down there? Yeah, yeah, I've you been have? down there. Yes, ba Bahia is, is a lot like New Orleans, and they had rice and beans. I was like, wow, I didn't know y'all was cooking like that, too. <laughs> we have to take the show to, we're going to take the show to Rio, Chris. Done. Done. Show's going to Rio. Can you, can, you give, can you give me a little bit of that, more of that little bit of that flavor as we go out? Oh, yeah. John Baptiste, everybody. Thank you, John. Yes, indeed. People make the world go round. My first guest tonight is a New York Times bestselling author and the former director of the FBI. Please welcome to A Late Show, James Comey. Director, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Stephen. I'm, I'm surprised a man of your height can fit into a Zoom box. <laughs> I'm jammed into a little box. Okay. Now... I'm not entirely sure where to begin. I, I, I want to get uh, to your new book, Saving Justice, because I think that has a uh, particular resonance right now. But before we get into that, I want to talk about the, the events of this last week and your perspective on working for this administration. The president, as you said in your last book, asked you for loyalty seven days after his inauguration. And we have seen so the dangerous repercussions of the need for that kind of blind loyalty to President Trump, um, obviously most disturbingly last Wednesday, but then in the excuses and the obfuscations being made by the sort of spineless members of the party who are following him for their own benefit. What is your reaction to what you saw last Wednesday and as a follow-up, your reaction to those who are still making excuses? Well, as an American, I hope like all Americans, I was sickened to see an attack on the center of our democracy. As a former law enforcement official, I was angry that the Capitol was so poorly defended. And I found that mix disorienting and very, very concerning. And then to see people making excuses for an assault on our democracy just deepens my sense of nausea and distaste for them and makes me worry about how we're going to get between here and the inauguration. I, I mean, this is the United States of America, and I, I, I think that calls for unity are always welcome, but shouldn't there be some price of admission to the unity party? Don't the people who have uh, supported the president up till now have to admit and understand what a danger he is? And then we can all unify in dealing with that danger. Yeah, they're standing in the lobby of a building that they lit on fire. As the rest of us are running out, they're urging us all to love each other and to unify. Well, there's some things that have to be dealt with first. We need to protect the building, and people need to admit their responsibility. They have nurtured the explosion, almost a Chernobyl-like explosion, of the radioactive stew of racism, misogyny, and conspiracy-minded violence that we've long had in this country, but we've kept it in a containment building. They've been digging at the foundation of that building for the last four to five years, and now we've seen the explosion, and there has to be responsibility for that. You, you said earlier that you were shocked as a law enforcement official. You were shocked not only by the lawlessness, but the lack of preparation. Um, uh, Christopher Wray, who was one of your successors, the director, told Congress on September 17th that white supremacists are the biggest domestic terrorism threat and that we should be prepared for that. Now, the Washington Post also reports that the FBI warned law enforcement agencies about this specific attack. So you have the generalized warning from the director of the FBI, your old job, and then you have specific warnings from the FBI. I've tried to figure out, piece together the different explanations as to why there wasn't preparation. Do you have some sense why they weren't prepared for this from what you've seen from news reports? I'm asking you to curate the news to me to see if you can explain from your perspective why they didn't have a show of force for what was so clearly a dangerous group. Yeah, I, I can't explain it, Stephen. I, we were hit as a government after 9-11 for a failure of imagination. We didn't anticipate the way the terrorists might come at us. This wouldn't have involved any imagination at all. This was just a failure. 
and I can't explain it. There are little pieces of it that I see, maybe breakdowns in communication mm -hmm. or maybe a fear of not being too aggressive in the posture of the defense around the Capitol. None of that makes any sense to me. It's going to be really important that we as a country understand what happened as we did at 9-11. Now, officials at the DOJ and the FBI held a news conference today. Did you get a chance to see that? Yeah. What, what stood out to you, first of all? They're doing it the way you would expect them to do the work. This is what the FBI does best, which is to find the people responsible and bring them to justice quickly. And so if you were there and you were participating in that attack, there's going to be a knock on your door. You should turn yourself in now. And they're thinking about it as they should, as a seditious conspiracy an insurrection against the United States government. That's the, the first thing that struck me, is this is what the FBI does and the American people want the FBI to do. Um, and when you say you should turn yourself in, you don't mean, do you mean just the people who have been named that they're searching for? Or if you know you were there and engaged in lawful activity, you should turn yourself in because there are cameras all over the place and they're gonna find you? Yeah, if you trespassed on the property, if you went up those stairs, not even into the building, if you went up those stairs, you committed a crime. If you participated in, in assaults on police officers, if you went inside the building, any of that, you are going to be found. The, the Bureau is a human organization with lots of flaws. One thing it does extremely well is relentlessly track down people like this. Were you surprised it took this long to get this press conference from the FBI or the DOJ? Because we've all been kind of relying on catch-as-catch-can information about what was being done so far to apprehend people. Yes, I was. I, I think it's important at all times that law enforcement be transparent about its work. It's one of the reasons I wrote the book, but especially in crisis. The American people need to hear that adults are on this and have an understanding of what they're doing. So I was surprised it took so long. While we, while we, while we heard from uh, DOJ and FBI officials at the press conference today, we haven't heard from Director Ray. Are you surprised that he hasn't come out? Should he be out there out front telling us what's being done? In normal times, sure. But I, I, I speculate, because I don't know, I haven't spoken to him, that he is a person of great integrity trying to stay in the job and not to give an unstable president an excuse to decapitate the FBI in the middle of a crisis. That's just speculation, but it's informed speculation. I could imagine him wanting to be careful not to antagonize the man in the White House for another eight days. So it's really in the interests of maintaining the investigations or continuity at the Bureau is your would be your speculation? Do you have is that yeah, based? My guess. Is that based on any conversations you've had? No, it's just based on my experience knowing the bureau, knowing the kind of person Chris Ray is, a person of great integrity, but very prudent, and knowing the kind of president we have. If he goes out there and starts talking about seditious incitement comments by people that they're investigating, the bureau may be decapitated when we need it most. But that these these lawyers who went out today or these investigators who went out today it's okay for them to say it because in the president's point of view, they're, they're nobodies. Yeah, they're career people no one's ever heard of. Now, knowing the president's paranoia, he'll probably try and connect that quickly to the director, but at least it gives the director some space so as not to prompt uh, an immediate firing. That would be very bad for the agency and the country. Um, your new book is called Saving Justice. And, and in it, you say that the Department of Justice should not pursue a criminal investigation of the president once he leaves office. Have the events of the last week changed your mind about that? That was a really hard call when I wrote it back in the fall. It's even harder now. I think I'm still in the place that the country is best served by not giving Donald Trump space on our television screens in a court proceeding in D.C. for the next three or four years. What about Joe space Biden in an eight by five cell? Well, I'm, I'm, I believe the state prosecutors in New York should pursue him for the crook he was before he became president. And if they convict him, that's fine. I just don't think that the mission Joe Biden has before him, which is to heal our country both spiritually and literally, because so many of our fellow Americans are dying, is not advanced by having Donald Trump get what he wants most, which is to be in the drama in Washington every single day. I'd rather the lights go out, which is the greatest punishment he could imagine. Stand on your lawn at Mar-a-Lago and yell at cars, but not have the lights on there and let Joe Biden try to get on with the business of the United States. Um, what makes you think he's not gonna grab for the spotlight anyway? I mean, there are uh, craven and cynical members of the media who will give him all the spotlight that he wants. He will, and that's what makes it such a close call. I think that 
the, the amount of spotlight he could claim would be so much greater if he was walking in and out of the federal courthouse in D.C. as part of United States versus Donald Trump. That circus would dominate our nation for probably another three years or more. Well, let, let's let's talk about the the people who um, were part of this violent insurrection. These people who, in my opinion, are accessory to murder. What should happen to them? Because, I mean, I'm opposed to the death penalty, but something terrible has to be rained down on these people so that no one ever breathes the idea of doing it again. They should all come to see the rule of law that's the spine of this country up very, very close. Depending upon their involvement, they should be brought to justice and punished severely. I'm also opposed to the death penalty, but they should be punished severely because they were part of a conspiracy that resulted in the murder of a police officer. There's nothing more serious than that in an attack on the center of our democracy. And so America's rule of law is our, is our great spine, and it should be brought to bear on all of them over the next days and months. You had a, 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 a unique view of uh, the president uh, and his psyche when he felt like he wasn't getting the loyalty that he believed that he deserved. Uh, Mitch McConnell reportedly behind closed doors is actually happy that Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats are bringing forward these articles of impeachment. You have people uh, leaving his cabinet. What do you think is going on in that squirrel cage of a brain of his right now? It's something really scary because this is a person, as you know, who, for whom affirmation is like oxygen. He craves it, he needs it, and now he's not only not getting it, he will perceive betrayal by those closest to him. And this is gonna be a very, very difficult time for our country over the next eight days. We have to take a quick break, uh, but when we come back, I'll ask Director Comey about um, this Hillary Clinton person and her emails. He mentions it in here, and it's just a fascinating story. Yeah. 